Anyway, this is Bible Q&A. My name is Mullet, and we are at it again, aren't we? So, let's fire from the hip and get started. On Twitter, had someone tweet a question at me. Didn't God choose us long before we accepted Him? Now, this isn't necessarily a Bible question. This is a theology question, specifically um, the belief that, you know, God chose us long before we accepted him. That's very, that's found a lot in uh, in Calvinism and also in, uh, in a lot of Protestant denominations. It comes from the idea that was expressed by Martin Luther in the Reformation. And if you don't know what the Reformation is, it is the name of the split that occurred when a very large group of Christians following Martin Luther, a former Catholic Church guy, left the Catholic Church due to disagreements that they had about um, the Bible's place in the church and moreover how people got saved by Jesus to begin with. And it all rests on this idea of, um, of salvation or justification by grace alone. And by grace alone means only by God saying that you're saved. In other words, it's not about what you do so much as what God does, if that makes sense. It's not about all the good deeds that you can pile up. It's about all the things that Jesus did, specifically and most importantly, dying on the cross for our sins. And it's based on that that we know that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. That's where that comes from. And the idea that God chose us before we chose him is a thought that comes out of Calvinism, which came out of the Reformation. So you see, so what happened is we have this offshoot and then we have another offshoot. And I'm not saying offshoot in a derogatory manner. I'm just saying that this is the way that it grew out and there are different degrees to which people believe this i mean you know the theology calvinism has multiple nuances some they're they're usually called points <laughs> and you know usually you'll find like four or five point calvinists and i could go into that and i will if um if somebody wants to message me for more details but i'm not going to get into the details too much because it would just take too long um what you need to know essentially is that calvinists believe a very certain amount of things but one of them is that uh that god predestines people to respond to the gospel and say yes and that's essentially how it works and that the holy spirit acts as the method by which we are saved so in other words salvation becomes a fully supernatural act and when you accept jesus christ as your lord and savior then the holy spirit comes down and and, and has actually produced that expression within you <laughs> so essentially that's kind of the idea behind it and at the same time i also want to express that not all denominations um necessarily believe that that is you know calvinism right there but for the most part, most Protestant denominations and most people who've grown up in Protestant churches will say, well, of course, uh, I know that I'm saved and that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ because he died on the cross for my sins. That's justification, you know, by faith alone, by faith in Jesus Christ, we can stand confident in God's presence. There you go. Comes, it comes out of that, and at the same time, it grows out of that. There's a rich history of Christian thinking and theology out there, and you don't necessarily get it all uh, going to church on Sunday. That's just, you know, sort of a consequence, because at the end of the day, the church is concerned with the community that it's in and the place that it's in. But this is something that you can learn more about, especially as you uh, grow up and potentially go to college, uh, if, especially if it's a private Christian college, you can learn more about it. There are books you can check out as well. Just go ahead and contact me if you want more info 
than that and I will uh, you know get back to you <laughs> and then uh, second question today is when did God decide to give us eternal life well, God decided to give us eternal life all the way in the beginning. If you'll note in your Bibles, actually, and this actually is quite the Bible question, um, in Genesis chapter 3, <laughs> uh, it says here, the snake was sneakier than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. One day it came to the woman and said, Did God tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman answered, God said we could eat fruit from any tree in the garden except the one in the middle. He told us not to eat fruit from that tree or even to touch it. If we do, we will die. Now, although God actually didn't tell them not to touch it, he simply said, don't eat from the tree. But that's true. It does say that. And where is it exactly? Here it is. In Genesis chapter 2, in verse 17, God says, or actually 16, I'll start there. The Lord told him, you may eat fruit from any tree in the garden except the one that has the power to let you know the difference between right and wrong. If you eat any fruit from that tree, you will die before the day is over. You will die. So, if they would die only if they ate the fruit of that tree, then obviously that implies that God had no intention of having them in a dying state to begin with. They, you know, and a lot of people would argue that originally humanity never died, <laughs> that, that we were meant to exist in a permanent way. Is that rock solid? I don't know. There are some people out there who, who, who wonder about that, who question it. But to me, it makes more sense to just go ahead and assume that eternal life was part of the package. Because it, it's what we're getting. And obviously, you know, God's goal here with everything that's going on in the Bible is to restore humanity back to where it was before. To make things right and I think that eternal life is something that God always wanted us to have I don't think God wanted us to die and I don't think death was ever in God's plan at all I think that death is a consequence of sin I think that we see that in Genesis but we also see it again when Paul makes that comment that I have mentioned a lot here on Bible Q&A in Romans for the wages of sin is death so I think to answer your question, short, simple, to the point, God decided to give us eternal life in the beginning, but we didn't want it. Ooh. And we didn't. We wanted something else instead. We wanted to control our own destiny, and that's really the message of Genesis more than anything. It's that we wanted to become like God. What does that mean? What does it mean to be like God? Well, God controls everything. He runs the show. We wanted to control our own destinies, our own lives. We wanted to take it. You know, why did Adam and Eve want to take it? I don't know. One reason or another. The Bible doesn't say too much, but at the end of the day, that was the issue. So, there are two questions answered just for you all. <laughs> what we got here? I got a message flashing at me. Okay, I don't even know what that's about and what we got in the chat room. I'm gonna try and get back into the chat room. If you have any follow-up questions, start posting them now. I can always wing them. I normally don't uh, record this, but uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Do we have anything at all? Nope. Doesn't look like it. No follow-up questions yet. Well, I'll keep an eye out for those. This has been Bible Q&A. If you have any follow-up questions and you're watching this afterwards, Email me at clint at remedylive.com and we'll talk some more. You can also contact me anonymously. All you have to do is go down to more info at the bottom of remedylive.com. Click on got a question, fill out your question for the Bible Q&A show and you're good to go. We got Brit Nicole coming up now with Still That Girl right here on Remedy Live. We chat, we listen, and we love... <laughs>